I also love this post from Susan's other blog, Trout Towers. This is called Haiku. The first line is five. The second line is seven. The third line is five. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Susan Blood. Several years ago, I went to see the Nutcracker with a boyfriend who had just dumped me. We already had the tickets, and since we were trying that let's still be friends thing, we kept our plans and went together. That's the official story. The real version is, the tickets were mine, and deep in my soul, I wanted to ruin Christmas for him. <laughs> Nothing can ruin Christmas like the Nutcracker. <laughs> It starts out all sparkly and magical, but then it charms you into a dream state and leaves you completely empty inside, wondering what, if anything, just happened. It's exactly like Christmas. In case you don't know the story, Clara is given a nutcracker by her Uncle Drosselmeyer. She loves it, and when the nutcracker comes to life and is attacked by an army of mice, she bravely helps fend them off, winning the love of the nutcracker, who magically becomes a prince. The prince takes her to the land of sweets, where they receive her as a hero. After she's been properly entertained, the prince drives her home and she wakes up. When it ends, you think, wait, it's over? Clara gets a glimpse of how magical life is, and then she wakes up with a crick in her neck from sleeping on the couch snuggled up with a wooden doll. <laughs> Just like my date with my ex-boyfriend, the Nutcracker begins with friends gathering to celebrate together. Sitting in the audience, I thought, this is what I want. Someone who will dance with me. Someone who understands the magic of this. I wanted to be one of the couples walking arm in arm through the snow to bestow gifts, dance quadrilles, and eat past hors d'oeuvres. I have a special fondness for past hors d'oeuvres. This is important. At Christmas time, you have to be very careful what you ask for. Within a few months, I was dating the Rat King, literally. <laughs> he was recovering from an injury that kept him from dancing with the rest of the ballet company and showed up at my yoga class. We hit it off. He was so charming, I completely forgot to bash him over the head with my slipper. That's not a euphemism. By the time he threw in the towel on ballet and began a more lucrative and exotic dance career, I was no closer to the secret of Christmas or past hors d'oeuvres, and we drifted apart. I did go see the Nutcracker after that, but I was careful not to ask for any Christmas miracles. Now, while I'm fine subjecting friends to the Nutcracker, I was leery of what it would do to my children. I was afraid it would build up their expectations and then dash them to bits as only the arts can. <laughs> was I wrong? Wanting the story to be something more? Is it really about a young girl who, although she has just saved the prince, is patronized by the sugar plum fairy? In a perfect world, Clara wakes up to find the Nutcracker Prince is real and was there all along. I want her to have the keys to the sleigh so she can go visit the Land of Sweets whenever she wants. Suspecting there was more to the story than the ballet was giving up, I found a copy of the original book by E.T.A. Hoffman to read and read it to the kids. I took out some of the parts where mice were threatening to bite babies in half and soldiers were losing their heads. We read a chapter every night. And it turns out I was right. At the very end of Hoffman's story, after the dream that is not a dream, the prince comes and asks her to marry him. And she does. The end. As usual, the book is better. In the book, it's not about a wooden doll in a beautifully wrapped box. This is why I sometimes have a hard time with Christmas. It seems to me that Christmas should be a life-changing dream, and not something that's all wrapping with the magic worn off by morning. There's so much that goes into it, so much promise and hope, and then it's over. I want it to be more like the Hoffman story, with something indisputable at the end. Life should somehow be more magical for our efforts. I'm not about to admit this publicly, but maybe the underlying promise of the Nutcracker is why I love Christmas. Because secretly and completely privately, I do love Christmas.
It gets dark at 3.15, but there is no brighter month than December. <laughs> we may not bundle up in ermine-trimmed frocks and promenade through the falling snow, but we do hold each other closer in the cold. We believe in things we cannot see, and there are a lot of cookies. <laughs> I keep thinking that within the nutcracker is the answer to everything, that there's some metaphysical hard nut that holds the secret of the season. The Rat King had no answers for me, but I know they're there. Thank you.